Hello and welcome to this short online workshop on reflective thinking and writing. My name is Emma Dempsey and I'm one of the learning advisors at the University of Westminster. So the objectives for this session are to explore the meaning of reflection and the importance of reflection in your studies, to provide tips on reflective writing assignments focusing on content and language, and to introduce a reflective model and demonstrate how this model can be used within your writing in order to deepen your reflections. So let's start by thinking about what reflection is. What does it mean to you? So feel free to pause the slide here and take a moment to think about this question. So what is reflection? Reflection is a process of consciously looking at and thinking about our experiences, our actions, feelings and responses and then interpreting them in order to learn from them. So we can do this by asking ourselves questions about what we did, how we did it and what we learnt from doing it. But importantly, why do we need to be reflective in higher education? Why reflect? Why is reflection such an important skill at university and beyond? So there are lots of reasons why. So firstly, reflecting can it help us to explore and clarify our feelings, reactions and responses to issues and situations. It can help us to explore situations from different perspectives. It can help us to see how adaptable we are to situations as well. It can also help us to consider our strengths and weaknesses and to explore gaps in our knowledge and skills and to find ways in order to develop these. And number six, interestingly, it can help us to explore the relationship between theory and practice and we will have a look at this a little bit later. And lastly, reflection is a highly employable and transferable skill. So most jobs will involve an element of reflection as part of the personal development. So it's a really good skill to acquire whilst at university. So essentially, reflection can help you to learn from your actions and experiences and can give you new perspectives, not just on your work, but actually on yourself as well. So let's move on to reflective assignments and you can see from this slide they come in many different forms. They can be structured or unstructured. For example, you might be asked to keep a diary. It could be a study or work journal, possibly a blog. You might be asked to write a reflective essay or maybe to include a reflective section in your report or possibly a dissertation. The most important thing is that you check your assignment brief carefully for guidelines and instructions on your reflective assignment because they vary widely. So do you keep a reflective journal as part of your course? If you do, how do you use it? What kind of information do you include? If you don't keep one, I recommend keeping one even if you don't have to because it can be a fantastic way to keep track of your learning journey and help you to identify the skills and knowledge that you need to develop. Additionally, if you do have a reflective essay or other assignment to write, you can use your reflective journal as a great source of reflections and evidence to draw upon, which is much easier than trying to remember all the learning experiences you've had throughout the term. So if you are going to keep a journal, here are some questions you can use as prompts to help you get started. So these are questions that you can ask yourself at the end of the week and I recommend if you are keeping a journal to do this on a regular basis and possibly at the end of the week is the best time to do this. So firstly, what experiences have you had this week that confirm this is the right course for you? What are you thinking? How are you feeling? Have you collected any evidence of competence this week? Have you identified any gaps in your knowledge this week? How could you tackle these? And lastly, have you identified any skills you found difficult to master? What could you do about this? So these are just question prompts. You can obviously include anything else that you feel is relevant and include any particular incidents or experiences which have happened. So let's get started on our first activity. This is a completely free writing activity and please don't worry about spelling, grammar, sentence structure or any other language issues. You can even record your thoughts if you prefer. 
So these questions are the same as on the previous slide, I've just condensed them slightly. So in this activity you could consider the following. So have you identified any gaps in your knowledge? How could you tackle these? Have you identified any skills you found difficult to master? What could you do about this? And number three, any other experiences or situations that have arisen and your thoughts and feelings on this. So pause the slide here and give yourself between five to ten minutes to do this activity and come back when you're ready. So I hope that you found the question prompts helpful and that you were able to reflect on some of these areas. I know that reflecting may be a new skill for many students. So if it doesn't come naturally first time, keep practicing regularly to become comfortable with this. Keeping a journal will help you to build your reflective skills. So it's really important at university to be reflective and academic when you are writing a reflective assignment. So what do you think are the key differences between reflective writing and core academic writing, for example, an essay? So feel free to pause the slide here and have a think about that question. So reflective writing actually has some really strong similarities with core academic writing like essays and reports, but there are some differences. So the similarities are we still need to do research and we need to develop our reflective writing. That absolutely is one thing they both have in common. Depending on the task, you need to focus on the question and the assignment brief and adhere to that. There will be analysis and evaluation in both except the slight difference there is that you will be analysing and evaluating yourself in reflective writing. Paragraphs should be organised in your writing, so we need to think about sentence structure, cohesion, etc. And also, of course, the discussion should be clear and coherent. So, on the left-hand side, we have the similarities between reflective writing and other core academic writing. So there's lots of similarities. The differences on the right hand side, let's have a look at those. So the differences are that actually reflective writing connects with personal feelings and behaviour. It may include observation, we can use the first person, and we can often use and discuss theoretical ideas to explore and interpret our experiences. So we can see the main differences are that the writing is connected to us. So this slide here provides some do's and don'ts when it comes to reflective writing. So on the left hand side we have the do's identified by the big tick. So it's important to give context so when you are writing reflectively we need a little bit of detail around the context. For example what is the experience that you're discussing or the situation or the reflection. So we need a little bit of description and for you to set the scene. We can use I freely. Number three we may be using academic material, in which case we will need to reference. We still want to use professional terminology and concepts in our reflective writing because it's still an academic assignment. And lastly, we still want to think about academic conventions such as paragraphing and structure and cohesion. The right hand side represents the don'ts. So importantly, don't report complete conversations because that will use up a lot of words and it will be very descriptive. So we need to keep our descriptions quite brief. So don't assume your reader knows you. Number three, you do not need to write in chronological order. It's about being selective. Number four, don't use informal language. And lastly, number five, don't simply state what happened because a lot of the marks will be awarded for your reflective insights and interpretations. So if you are preparing for a reflective assignment, you will need to collect evidence, just as you would for an essay, for example. But this time the evidence will be your reflections. However, 
You may also be asked to include academic sources too, which may help you to explore your experiences more deeply and therefore deepen your reflections. It's also really important to be selective when writing reflective assignments. You don't need to include everything. So think about the important happenings, those critical incidents. Focus on a few significant, interesting aspects, those aspects which were challenging or even successful. So if your assignment is a reflective essay, then it's still important to create a good structure. So in a reflective essay, it's great to have an introduction, set the scene, explain to the reader what's going to come up in your reflective essay, what will you be reflecting on and why. And in the body, of course, we need to use paragraphs to keep a good structure, draw out themes, and as on the previous slide, consider those important happenings focus on a few significant areas, interesting, challenging or successful. And of course, it's quite nice to wrap it up and have a conclusion. And in your conclusion, you could even include an action plan for how you're going to develop in the future. So in your reflective writing assignments, it will be important for you to evaluate your work and or performance. So in reflective writing, it's not enough to say that you were satisfied or dissatisfied with the outcome. You also need to say why you feel something worked or not. You need to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of your work or performance. And you need to indicate what you have learned and how things could be done differently in the future. So in order to help you to evaluate your work and deepen your reflections, it's really helpful to use a reflective thinking model. They can also help you to structure your reflections. There are many reflective thinking models out there, but the one I'm showing here was actually created by Gibbs, and you may have heard of the Gibbs reflective cycle already. So feel free to pause the slide here if you like, and take some time to explore the different stages of this model, and then we can go through it together. So this model is made up of six stages and usually it's helpful to start at the top left at the description stage as this is where you will set the context for your reflection. For example, what are you reflecting on? What is the experience? Is it a module, a particular situation? Is it a work placement, maybe a group assignment? So here we're going to describe the context briefly. Then if we move clockwise, we come to the next stage, feelings. So what were you thinking and feeling at the time? Moving round to the next stage, evaluation, what was good and bad about the experience? And it's really important here to bring in balance and look at different perspectives. So this is a good time actually to include any peer or tutor feedback at this stage. Moving around the cycle to the next stage, analysis, this is where we try to make sense of the experience. Why did something happen the way it did? At this stage, you could even include academic material to try to explain your experiences. And often you will be asked to include academic material here and theoretical ideas, but not always. So always check your assignment guidelines. So moving on to the penultimate stage, conclusion. So looking back on the experience, what could you have done differently? And lastly, the last stage, the action plan. So this is the forward thinking developmental part of the cycle. So although reflection is about looking back, actually it's very much forward looking, it's developmental and it looks to the future. So an important part of reflective writing is to think about what you would change if that same experience or situation arose again. What would you do differently? And what skills might you need to develop as an outcome for all of this? So this model can be condensed into the following elements. So this is a simplified version of the model. So before we look at the activity, I'll just go through these with you quickly. So firstly, describe what happened. What did you think? How did you feel? Then interpret what happened. 
what went well, not so well, why did it happen the way it did, are the different views to consider. An outcome. Have your ideas changed? What would you do differently? Or is more reflection needed? So these three sections are a condensed form of this cycle here. So let's get started on our second activity, our last activity. And I would like you to reflect on an occasion when you were dissatisfied with your work or performance or both. And I'd like you to reflect on these three stages here. So again, this is a free writing activity. Please don't worry about any language issues whatsoever. And again, you can record your thoughts if you prefer. So pause the slide here, take around five to 10 minutes and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So again, this may not have felt easy for some of you, quite uncomfortable maybe, and that's very natural as it can be quite uncomfortable actually to reflect and critique your own work and performance in this way. But with regular reflection, this will become easier. So let's look at reflective writing style briefly before we come to the end of this workshop. So in terms of reflective writing style, this slide provides a few tips um, around which tends to use and whether we should be using the first or third person. So we generally use the first person to talk about our reflections and we usually use the past tense as they are completed actions and events. If you are including academic sources, we tend to use the present tense to introduce these and we tend to use the third person. So when discussing reflections, you might also find it helps to use language of caution, such as the examples below here. So it's possible, perhaps, might, could, these can be quite helpful. And additionally, if you are including academic sources in your reflective assignments, it's really lovely to produce a balance by actually weaving together your experience with the academic material so that in one paragraph we can see your experiences, your reflections alongside the academic material. And the example here, for example, I thought this, I felt, and Kanti suggests that. So we can see the first person with the third person. We can see your experiences with the academic material, it helping you to explore your experiences. So it's far more effective to have this weaving effect than one section with your experiences and one section on the academic material. And the next slide gives you a nice example of how this might look, but this is obviously just an example. So feel free to pause the slide here and have a look at this extract and I'll also read it for you now. Jones argues that the key ability of a transformational leader is the ability to empower others, while Fay maintains that their key strength is to increase feelings of self-worth and capability in their team members. So this part highlighted in red is the academic material and we can see the student using the third person here to introduce this. The second part in blue are the reflections of the student. So I'll read this for you. On reflection, my own experience of transformational leadership appeared to be based principally on being persuaded by the sheer force of personality of the individual that I had the potential to contribute and achieve. It seemed to me that it was their apparent faith in me and their power of persuasion that enabled me to become an effective team member. So although this section in blue is a student's reflection, they are using the first person, but it still is written very well and there is still kind of an academic tone there. However, I hope this very short example, only one example, gives you an idea of how to weave in the academic material with the personal reflections. Of course, your reflections may look somewhat different. And remember, you may not be asked to include academic references in your reflective assignments. So in summary now, Make time to pause, record and reflect on a regular basis and keep a reflective journal. Stand back from situations and try to be as objective as possible. 
Remember, this is still an assignment worth a certain percentage of marks, so be as rigorous and thorough as he would be for any other academic assignment. Number four is very important. Remember that most of the marks awarded for your work are likely to be for the reflective insights and interpretations, so keep your descriptions brief and to the point. And lastly, be honest, be, re be selective and look to the future. Show how you are going to take your reflections forward to develop your skills and knowledge. So lastly, I really hope this workshop has helped to develop your understanding of reflective thinking and writing. And if you would like more information and support on this or any other academic skill, please do explore all of our other resources that we have. We have further videos, online guides, live workshops and appointments as well.